All right, so if you're actually pretty good in basic math, well, this will be a very easy problem to solve without using a calculator. Okay, so let's take a look at the question. We have negative three squared plus six times four plus one in parentheses. So once again, no calculators, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct solution in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step without a calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the solution. The correct answer here, again, negative three squared plus six times four plus one in parentheses. The solution to the problem is 21. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus. If you're like, oh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I was convinced that I got this right. What happened? Well, you likely made a common error. And uh, that could be a good thing because this will teach you something that you didn't know or didn't understand about math. All right, so let's see exactly how to solve this problem without using a calculator. Now, the first thing we need to be thinking about is the order of operations, okay? And I'll explain this one part where there's a lot of confusion in just one second. But uh, we know uh, a lot of you may be confused about the order of operations. This is another uh, area that a lot of uh, students struggle with. Now, uh, in mathematics, uh, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and powers, these are mathematical operations, okay? These are mathematical operators. And we need to know what is the correct order to do a problem because uh, depending on how, what order you take, you're going to generate different values. Now, of course, there's only one correct order. So the correct order to take is defined by uh, the order of operations, which is kind of indicated by this nice acronym. Uh, and we um, these are letters that stand for something. And this little phrase right here is called PEMDAS, right? PEMDAS. And these letters, of course, stand for something. This is a checklist we're going to follow, and we're going to follow it from left to right. Now, I'm going to explain uh, this PEMDAS here uh, real quick here in a second, but I want to give you a nice, lovely memory aid that goes along with this, and that is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. People have been saying this for decades. Probably my great-grandparents way back in the 1920s and 30s were saying this. Uh, I don't know what Aunt Sally did, but we thank Aunt Sally for her awesome little phrase. But uh, anyways, that's how you can remember PEMDAS. Now, let's go ahead and uh, get into uh, the order of operations. So the P here stands for parentheses. So we're going to do parentheses first. Obviously, we have some parentheses in our problem. But uh, this P is also uh, these type of things like brackets and these type of brackets like this. Really, it's technically... Uh, grouping symbols okay so anytime you see grouping symbols we're going to go to those first now sometimes you have a problem we have parentheses inside parentheses or uh, parentheses inside brackets so the way this uh, works you're going to go to the innermost parentheses finish that and just kind of work your way out from there okay so that's what the P stands for and now let's move on to E so E is effectively like powers, okay? So you can think of that as powers. And some of you might be saying, well, if it's powers, why don't they put another P here? Well, it would be kind of confusing. Real quick, when you have a power, there's actually two components that make up the power. This little number in the top right is called the exponent. And this big number down here is called the base, okay? The entire thing is a power. So this is two to the third power. Again, this little number up here is the exponent. So E really stands for exponents, but that's what it means. It means, hey, do powers. Okay, now the next part of, or the remaining part of the order of operations gets a lot of confusion, okay? And for good reason. I don't think uh, this is stressed you know, often enough uh, or well enough in a lot of textbooks. But let's just quickly define what M, D, A, and S stand for. So M is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, S is subtraction. Now, I am saying that this is a checklist that goes from left to right. So most people would say, oh, well, you have to do all of multiplication, and then you move on to division uh, like so. But that's not the way it works. Okay, So really the way it works, is this you want to think of these as two groups. So the next thing you're going to do, you're going to do is multiplication or division. Okay, You're going to do multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. 
So if I see multiplication and then division like this, I'm going to do it from left to right this way. But if I see division before multiplication from left to right, I will do it this way. Okay. Same thing for addition and subtraction. Subtraction, excuse me. It's whatever you see first from left to right. Okay, so now that you have a strong understanding of the order of operations, it's pretty clear that we have to start right here with these parentheses, and then we'll just kind of just take one step at a time as we get through, uh, you know, um, get uh, going and uh, into the solution of this problem. Now, a lot of you might be saying, well, you know, I want to give this problem another try. That's fantastic. If you, there was something that was, you know, confusing you, you should try this problem and not wait for me to show you what to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So the first thing, I'm thinking about PEMDAS. So it's parentheses, so I have to go where the parentheses are at and go inside of the parentheses and clean up everything there. So uh, 4 plus 1, that's pretty easy. That is 5. Okay, so no problems right here. And the next thing I'm going to show you is where there is a lot of confusion. So in terms of the order of operations, okay, uh, let's just put this PEMDAS back up, right? P-E-M-D-A-S. We just uh, took care of our parentheses. There's no more parentheses. Now, some of you are saying, hey, well, there's parentheses here. Well, there's nothing to do inside of it, right? We don't have any math, prom, uh, any operations to do. So this simply just means uh, six times five at this point, okay? So next thing on our list is uh, exponents, powers. So do we have any powers? Yes, indeed, right here. So we're going to have to take care of that before we move on to any multiplication or division and addition and subtraction. And this is the part of the problem that uh, tends to give um, a lot of people confusion. And I'm going to answer exactly how to handle this situation in just one second because I want you to handle the situation of subscribing to my YouTube channel and hitting that notification button. This really does help me out big time. My objective with my YouTube channel is to reach as many people as possible. I want to try to expand my classroom, my math classroom, if you will, uh, to as many people who need assistance in math. Okay, uh, It's been my experience over the years that most people who struggle math do not have to struggle. Okay, what they're lacking is clear and understandable instruction. Okay, in other words, instruction that makes sense. And my objective is to try to teach things that are like non-textbook like. Right, try to give you great explanations. Now, of course, you have to follow through by practicing. But anyways, by you subscribing to my channel, it really does help the YouTube algorithm and push more of my content out. Real quick, if you're new to my channel. Um, I have about 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math by calculus and everything in between. But uh, if you want my best content, uh, my best instruction, check out my math courses. I'll leave links to those in the description of this video. Okay, so back to the problem. Okay, so right here is where a lot of you um, are going to get in trouble in this problem. Now, most of you probably understand order of operations pretty well. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing everything you're telling me to do. And why did I get this problem wrong? Well, it could be because you uh, uh, did this part incorrectly or you interpreted what was going on here incorrectly. And I get um, a lot of feedback from people like, no, you're wrong. I'm right. Well, again, if you plug all this into your scientific calculator, you'll see that I am correct. Now, this negative 3 squared, we have to figure out because this is uh, powers, right? We have to handle this exponent part first. But here is the thing. A lot of people think that this negative 3 squared is the same thing as taking negative 3 to the second power. Okay, uh, These two things are uh, different. Okay, This does not mean do this. Okay, This is something different. And a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to take negative 3 and multiply by itself, and I'm going to get a positive 9. Well, that's incorrect. Let's go to take a look why. And if you can understand this, this is going to save you a lot of heartache in the future. Okay, so negative 3 squared. This is not our situation, but let's just kind of take a look at what this means. Negative 3 in closed in parentheses squared means take negative 3 and multiply by itself two times, right? So a negative times a negative is a positive, so our answer is going to be positive 9. Now this right here, what we are actually have to do in this problem, is negative 3 squared. This does not mean this, and it can be easily confused. So if you've been confused or if you are confused, 
you know, uh, I understand, right? But let's try to uh, clear up that confusion right now. What this means, negative 3 squared, where there's no parentheses, at that, is that this squared right here, this exponent, is acting upon this. So really, I want you to interpret this situation as the opposite of 3 squared, okay, or the negative of 3 squared. So 3 squared is 3 times 3, that's 9. So this is negative 9, okay? So, uh, you know, you need to be able to distinguish where that negative sign is in a power. Okay, another way you can kind of think of that is this is a negative of 3 squared. And um, let's, get, let's see if we can make this even a little bit more clear here in a second. Uh, so negative 3 squared, technically, this is like a negative 1. So that would be like a negative 1 times a 3 squared. So when we're thinking about the order of operations, we're going to do powers before multiplication. So that's a positive 9. So again, this is going to be a negative 9. All right. So however you want to understand it, but you need to recognize the difference when you're faced with a situation like this. You're not going to uh, interpret it as a, uh, you know, taking a power of this entire negative 3. Very, very common misunderstanding. And hopefully we kind of cleared up that confusion all right, so the answer here is negative 9. All right, so now at this point, we're doing our PEMDAS. We're going to have to take care of power. So this negative 3 squared is negative 9, not positive 9. And so we have negative 9 plus 6 times 5. All right, so 6 times 5. And uh, that's going to be pretty easy to do here. So 6 times 5, of course, is 30. So negative 9 uh, plus 30 is uh, 30 minus 9. And, of course, the correct answer would be 21. Now, if you're struggling with anything here, okay, uh, what you want to do is just make note, okay? Like, okay, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. I don't understand this. Maybe it's powers. Maybe it's positive and negative numbers. Uh, maybe it's something else, okay? Well, this becomes your kind of like your math shopping list, all right? So what you have to do is go to the math store and pick up these skills. You're like, yeah, hey, I need one of these, one of those, and one of these. And that's how you improve in math, okay? Uh, if you um, don't understand something, okay, especially in fundamental basic mathematics, that's going to keep coming up over and over and over again, all right? So the best way to improve in math is to identify what you don't understand and then work on that one skill until you do understand it. Uh, you know, you don't want to ignore anything. And this is kind of, you know, I can remember, um, you know, several times, I'm just trying to find a nice little place to write here. Matter of fact, I'll just write it right here. For those of you that are students, let me just show you here real quick what you don't want to do. So let's say you have chapter one, chapter two, and so forth, chapter seven, uh, chapter uh, 15 in some sort of math course. So let's suppose, oh, I'm getting uh, great. I'm doing well. Chapter one, got an A there. Chapter two, A here. Everything is going great. Then you hit chapter seven and then you have a tough time. You get like a D in it and then you get very sad. You know, you're like, oh, I'm not going to do well. Uh, the worst thing you could do is be like, well, forget that chapter. I'll just wait till the next chapter. You know, maybe I'll do better in chapter eight. Okay. And then uh, what ends up happening is if you don't fix these problems, th this stuff haunts you going forward. Okay. Math is uh, built upon itself. So when you um, have a tough time with a particular topic, what you want to do is immediately start to address it. Okay. And uh, the way to do that is to understand what you do not understand. Okay. Be like, oh, I don't understand this. I need to go learn this. Okay. And that is my job, right? Is to try to give you uh, some instruction so you can figure this stuff out, but you're not going to improve, uh, you know, on, you know, in math, uh, even if you understand something, unless you practice. You got to practice for this to become your own skill. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.